Welcome back to another video on my channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm so happy to see you. Let's go ahead and get into today's tutorial. Today is going to be on this practice hand, obviously, <laughs> and it's going to be a design that I found on Instagram by one of the people, the nail artists that I follow, and I absolutely adore her work. Her name is Nails by Katie Dutra. She is super talented. If you don't follow her, which you probably already do if you know who I am, go follow her. She is amazing. So without further ado, here's today's inspo. We're going with the pink and the gold hearts. I think it is so so adorable and I can't wait to recreate this look. We're going in today with the Phoenix Nail Co. Liquid Builder. This is a builder in a bottle and it is in the shade BL03. I like to use this with a base layer. So I go in and I do a full cure of a really thin base coat using this same product. And this helps to reduce the amount of exposure that you are introducing into your client's life. And so by having it cured, you're making sure that there is no excess gel, excess uncured gel that is going to be in contact with the nail plate. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't go ahead and leave a comment, I'd be happy to explain further. But yeah, here we go. We're gonna do this thin base coat cure and then we'll come back in with a slip layer. All right, now that that base layer is cured, we're gonna go in again using that same Phoenix Nail Co product and we're going to put a slip layer. So your slip layer is a level or a layer basically of gel that you don't cure. This is what you put your bigger bead, your structure bead, building bead, whatever it is you wanna call it. You put that bigger dollop of gel into this wet uncured slip layer and that's what allows it to really melt in place and to self level to perfection. I always like to go in and refine with a liner brush and here you can see exactly why. There's that little divot in there and so I use this thin liner brush to just kind of manipulate the product and pull it to where I need it. You can also turn the hand upside down and allow gravity to work with you. It's definitely easier to work with gravity than it is to work against gravity. Additionally, gel goes where gel already is. It's attracted to gel. So if you get some on the sidewalls and you don't clean it properly, that bigger bead is going to follow your slip layer or your base layer into the sidewalls. And so make sure you're working with a clean surface. And if you have any spillage, you have any seepage, that sounds disgusting. If you have any flooding, make sure you clean it up before curing or before going in and adding your bigger bead. So as you can see, that line of light looks pretty good. A little refinement here just to bring a little bit more bulk into the apex area. And then we're gonna go ahead and cure using a flash cure light. Sometimes during the application process, you can develop bubbles. There I am pointing it out. It's a really simple, easy fix. So you just grab some alcohol and that same liner brush that you've been using, and you just dab that alcohol right onto the bubble. It makes it disappear immediately and it self levels back into perfection. Although here I am pulling it up from the free edge because as I was messing with the bubble, it did self level a little too much down into that area. And we're just gonna bring that back up into the apex. That way we have nice strength and structure to our nail. All right, and here's how they look fresh out of the curing lamp. There are minimal to no imperfections. That line of light looks really nice. We have nice structure. And really, I'm just gonna skip the finish filing portion because it's not necessary. At the end, I'll go through and I will touch up the free edge just a little bit, 
but really there's not a whole lot that needs to be done from this point forward as far as shaping goes. I'm going to be using the color Tropicana Days number 815 by D&D &D as my base color. This color is so beautiful and it's one of my favorites to use because it's a one coat color. <laughs> this is, if you do nails, you understand how nice that is, especially when we're talking about pink. So yeah, if you don't have this in your collection, run, don't walk, go get it because it's going to be so popular come spring and summer. And now probably the best part is stamping. You can definitely hand paint this. Stars are really not difficult, but my OCD means that I have to have everything looking identical. And so I'm going to go in with stamping because if they are too different looking, it's going to really bug me and I'm not going to like how it looks. So I'm trying out this new stamper that I got. It's adjustable so you can resize the image to be bigger a normal size or you can make it smaller from what I understand. However, full disclosure, I found this really difficult to line up on the nail because you can't see with that dial on the back. We're going in with this stamping plate and the stamping polish. Both are from Amazon. I do prefer Clear Jelly Stamper, but I just didn't have anything from them that matched what I needed for this look. So we're gonna go in and just use what we have. The easiest way to pick up the star that I want is to swipe over and through the star that's next to it. That's what gives me a nice clean line for the star that I want. And I'm going to use the swiping card here just to remove what I don't want, adjust the size, and now I'm gonna go put it on the nail. And it's about this moment right here where I realize I can't see through the back of this to line it up to be where I want it. And so I'm trying to adjust it, trying to manipulate it. Finally, I look from like the bottom side of the stamper up and although I got it on the nail and I think it looks good it wasn't quite where I was hoping to get it and it made it really difficult to line the other stars up to the point that I actually went back to my old stamper and began using that one instead. All right, we got all our stars on there. It was very time consuming and very tedious. I recommend trying something like this if you're looking to up your stamping skills by picking an isolated image like this. It really it made me feel a lot better about stamping, to be totally honest. It's something that I've wanted to do, I have felt semi-comfortable doing, but this really, this really helped and I highly recommend it if you're looking to up your skills. And now we're going in with our base coat. I use a base coat in place of double top coating just to help with the chance that it's going to like separate and kind of peel away. A lot of top coats do that. Here is our base coat cured. We're not going to worry about that stamping polish that's on the skin because once we put our top coat on, we can wipe that away really easily with acetone rather than having to try and finesse around it without messing up the stamping that we have on the nail. Now we're going in with a top coat and even though I used a base coat, this top coat still decided to separate anyway. So you'll see me go in and buff that in here in just a moment. It is what it is. We're just going to have to live with it. I will keep that in mind for future reference. These two don't work together. It's all something that you have to play with as you learn and become comfortable with the products that you have. All right, here are the finished nails. We're going to go in and remove that last little bit of stamping polish. This is really simple to do. It's actually very easy. A lot of people really struggle trying to finesse around it with a cleanup brush. But once you've top coated, just go ahead and grab a lint-free wipe, soak it in some acetone, and just rub it off. You're not going to hurt the top coat at all, and you're going to get really clean cuticles so that your pictures look amazing when you're ready to post them. Here is the final look. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a like, leave me a comment, and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more just like this.
thanks so much for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.